Hi everybody, this is Reese Barber from Audiology Associates. Thank you very much for watching our Arrow Bite video today. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about the cochlea and more specifically, how it converts the sound waves, which we talked about in last week's video, into these nerve impulses, which we interpret as sound. Now, if you haven't watched last week's video already, then I highly recommend you go back and watch that video on sound waves first before you come into this video, because it's gonna make things a little bit easier to understand a bit later on. We'll also be running a little quiz at the end of this video, so stay tuned for that one as well, guys. So when we talk about the cochlea, we're talking about this snail shell structure that's in the inner part of the ear. And we talked last week about how the sound waves hit the eardrum, vibrating the eardrum and the three little bones sitting in the middle ear space, and then passing that sound onto the cochlea itself. So when we talk about the ossicles, which are these three little bones, the very last one in the chain is called your stapes. And it has a little oval plate at the bottom of it, which sits next door to something called the oval window, which is basically the entrance, if you like, to the cochlea. Now, as the ossicles move back and forth, as they vibrate with the sound waves, then what happens is that plate pushes in and out of this oval window, causing a vibration inside the cochlea. Now, if we take a cross section of that cochlea, we'll be able to see that there are various different ducts in here. So we have three different ducts. The top one is the scala vestibuli. The second or the middle one then is the scala media. And the bottom one is the scala tympani. I'm not expecting you to remember all these Latin names. You just need to know that they're there, okay? So inside the scala vestibuli and inside the scala tympani is a fluid called perilymph and inside the scala media is a fluid called endolymph. So when the oval window is pushed back and forth it actually opens to the scala vestibuli and what happens then is as that vibrates back and forth like this it creates a vibration in the perilymph which travels all the way up the snail shell structure right to the very top what they call the apex and as it comes down it passes into the scala tympani and comes all the way back down to the base again. Now, because you've got this vibration happening in the perilymph, in that fluid in the scala vestibuli, what you also get is that vibration being passed through into the scala media, that middle duct, and into the endolymph, the fluid that sits there. Now, that fluid then starts to vibrate, which then also passes the vibration on to a structure called the basilar membrane. Now, you're, what I want you to think of as far as the basilar membrane is concerned is like a long elastic piece of ribbon, which is wide on one end and narrow on the other, okay? Okay, so a very flexible piece of ribbon. Now, as that vibration passes into the basilar membrane, it creates what we call a traveling wave. Now, a traveling wave, if you've ever had a piece of rope and flicked it up and down very quickly and you get this rapid up and down movement which travels the whole length of the rope, that's what I mean by a traveling wave, okay? So that's passing through this membrane and it's waved all the way through. Now, what you find is because that membrane is wide at one end and narrow on the other, it's got different stiffnesses all the way along. So as that wave passes through the membrane, what you'll find is it will vibrate one specific part of that membrane a lot more than it vibrates the rest. And that's how we discern the frequency of a sound. So when a sound enters the cochlea, if it's a very high frequency sound, then the very front part of the basilar membrane, the piece closest to the base of the cochlea there, vibrates much more than the rest. And that's how we pick up the high frequency sounds. The middle of that membrane vibrates a little bit more for mid frequencies. And the very end of that membrane, the one at the very, very top of the cochlea, vibrates more for low frequency sound. Now, sitting on top of that basilar membrane is you have, you have another structure called the organ of corti. Now, this is where you find all your hair cells. So we talk a lot about hair cells in the inner part of the ear being where we pick up the sound. Now, the hair cells sit on top of the basilar membrane and they have this little, these little kind of hair strand structures that come up to the top of them. They're called stereocilia. And they sit just underneath another membrane called the tectorial membrane. Guys, I hope you're following me with this one. I know there's a lot of Latin names, but we'll simplify it in a second now. <clears throat> so they're sitting just and touching just the, the tectorial membrane there. Now, when I talked about this vibration to the basilar membrane, the one underneath the hair cells, I don't want you to imagine it moving up and down. What I want you to imagine it is it's moving side to side, so kind of wobbling back and forth like this. So when it wobbles back and forth, it wobbles the little hair cells as well. And because they're wobbling underneath, those little strands at the top, the stereocilia, start to bend and flex against the tectorial membrane. Now, when that happens, it tells the hair cell underneath to fire an impulse then up to the brain. So it passes into the vestibular cochlear nerve and up to the auditory cortex where we process it as sound. 
Now, let's backtrack a little bit because we were talking about this membrane vibrating more for certain frequencies. So if we talk about high frequency sound again, so if a high frequency sound comes into the cochlea, what happens then is the basilar membrane, which these little hair cells sit on top of, is gonna vibrate a lot more at one specific spot right at the entrance to the cochlea, which means that your brain can tell that those particular group of hair cells are being fired and then knows that that is a high frequency sound. The same if a low frequency sound came in, that traveling wave would go all the way to the very apex, the very top of the cochlea, and that group of hair cells would be stimulated more than the rest, and then your brain knows you're listening to a low frequency sound. Following me so far? Good stuff. So what we're gonna get then is we need to talk about, okay, that's how we determine the frequency of the sound, but how about the loudness of the sound? Well, that's simple. If you imagine the membrane is gonna vibrate a lot more if you've got a much more powerful, much more intense sound coming in. So louder sounds make this membrane move a lot more, wobble back and forth a lot more, and that's gonna cause a much bigger movement to these stereo cilia at the top, which are gonna vibrate back and forth much more. So that's gonna fire a bigger impulse to the brain, and your brain can interpret the loudness, the intensity of the sound. So which groups of hair cells get stimulated along that membrane determine the frequency and how much they get wobbled back and forth determines the intensity, so how loudness the sound is. And don't forget that your brain is interpreting this in an instant. So as soon as that sound hits the eardrum, it's being passed through the chain, vibrating inside the cochlea, vibrating the basilar membrane, making these little hair cells wobble back and forth, which in turn is wobbling the cilia. And then all that's getting fired up to the brain and your brain is making sense of that. So you can see what a delicate structure and organ this is and just how good it is at picking this sound up. Now what you'll also know is that you can see these little stereocilia, these little hair cells at the top, these little sort of strands, they are very, very delicate. So they can be damaged quite easily, especially with prolonged noise exposure and things like that, which is what we're gonna cover in our next video next week. Right, for your quiz guys, quiz time. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask you a question, I'm gonna give you a multiple choice answer. The first three people to answer this correctly in the comment section below, I'm gonna give a shout out to and you get a gold star from Mr. B in next week's Arrow Bite video, okay? So your question is, where in the cochlea is low frequency sound picked up? Is it A, at the base, so at the entrance of the cochlea, B, in the middle section of the cochlea, or C, at the apex of the cochlea, the very top part of the cochlea. Post your answers into the comment section below. The first three people are gonna get a shout out from me next week, and you're gonna get a gold star. All the best, guys. Take care of yourselves and one another. I'll see you next week for your next Arrow Bite video, and we'll see you tomorrow for your earwax removal video. Take care, everyone.